Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and today we're going to be starting a series talking about how to create a pie graph like this one using Unity's UI tools. Pie graphs are useful if you want to show comparisons of some numerical information, particularly if that information is all part of a whole. So for example, if you have a resource game where you want to see what percentage of the resources you're using are, you know, iron versus gasoline or water versus food, you could use a pie graph like this. Um, likewise, if you wanted to show, say, player stats, like in terms of, you know, how many of a particular enemy they defeated or which level they tended to die on, really anything like that. People love information. If you can kind of aggregate some information for them and show them, you know, the progress they're making or where they're having trouble, people love that sort of challenge. It's sort of in line with that idea of achievements and stuff, but just any kind of information you can give is always useful. And a pie graph is a great way to show numerical information in a more visual way without just showing a list of numbers. So a couple of things we're gonna to wanna to implement with our pie graph is the idea that we want it to be dynamic, that whatever information we put in, um, it will adapt to it. These sliders over here kind of represent the idea of information going into this pie graph. So if say information was to change and there's less of the red or more of the yellow or maybe there's only four stats instead of all six or maybe there's even only two different stats in this whole um, in this graph it still works the point of it is that the pie graph is going to be flexible as long as you put in a couple of points of numerical data it will be able to come up with a pie graph that makes sense for you so this first part, this video number one, is going to be really talking about the fundamentals of how this works. We're going to be working more manually than in code, um, but I want to show you kind of the reasoning behind what I'm making here so that then in the second part, when I get into the code, you know exactly what the code is doing and why it's doing it. If you're a little bit more familiar with Unity and the UI system, you might, you might be able to just jump to that second video, but it never hurts to know the uh, fundamentals either. So there's three things that our graph is going to need. The first one is data, which we just talked about. Um, we're gonna be inputting some form of data into our graph. The second thing we need is the actual um, pie graph itself, which is going to actually be an empty game object essentially for us. That's just gonna be responsible for holding the code to build the actual pie graph itself. The third element is these wedges. Um, each of these wedges is actually an individual game object that we're going to be populating dynamically um, through that um, script that we're going to have on the pie graph object itself. And so with those three elements, we're going to be able to create a, a cohesive pie graph. So to get started, we are actually going to create a new project today. Uh, we'll start up new project here. We'll call it uh, graph tutorial. We'll make it 2D, and we'll say create project. If you did it in 3D, that is fine. Um, I just like the cleanness of the background on the 2D when you start. It saves me a little bit of time. But it really doesn't make a difference because we're going to be working in the UI canvas. Um, the other thing you're going to need for this is some sort of a sprite, um, preferably a circle. It's a bit You can really make a pie graph out of any shape if you really want to, um, but a circle is the cleanest and makes the most sense when you look at it at a glance. So I'm going to import a circle sprite that I created. You can find one online easily enough. I'll actually put this one up on Dropbox or Google Drive or somewhere so that you can get it as well if you'd like it. Um, it is helpful if it's white because it's going to make it a lot easier to change the color of it as well. And just make sure that it's set to be a sprite. So now that we have this circle, what we need to do is we need to um, get that obviously onto our canvas. And so first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a UI canvas. And we'll focus on that in the scene view here. And we're going to create um, our empty game object. Now unfortunately, Unity doesn't provide a good way of creating a UI empty object. It will create a empty game object for you, but as you see over here, um, canvas objects should have a rect transform. And if you create an empty object, it just creates an object with a, um, with a transform, which isn't what we need. Actually, I'm gonna quickly check something here and see if we do a create an empty. Oh, actually you can just, if you, as long as you create an empty with it being parented to the canvas, um, it actually creates one with a rec transform. So that saves us a little bit of time. I was gonna do something else, but that's a little bit quicker. So just right click on your canvas, 
create empty and it will create an empty uh, UI object for you, which is very useful. And we'll call this pie graph because it's actually going to be our pie graph. Like it will hold, when we get into the video two, um, it will hold the code for the pie graph um, creation. Um, position zero, zero, zero is good. We will actually even make the width and height zero, zero because we don't want this to take up any physical space. It's really just a point where the graph is going to start. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually create our wedges. Um, so to do our wedges, we are going to create another game object and we'll child it to this. If you, again, if you right click on an object and create something, it'll be childed to it. And we're gonna wanna create an image. And we'll call this wedge, because it's gonna be our wedge. And so for our image sprite, we're gonna want this circle. And we'll see that that makes a nice circle here for us. Um, however, we don't want it to be a circle we want it to be a piece of a circle, you know, kind of like a pie slice. So how we do that is we're going to go over to image type and we're going to go from simple to filled. And what that does is it gives us some different options here. Filled is actually a really interesting thing for a lot of UI stuff you might want to do. For example, um, if you wanted to do a health bar, there is this fill method of horizontal, which will create this like left to right health bar that um, will look really clean and it's a really great way to show stuff like that without having to get into the math of sizes of stuff. Really all you're worrying about when you have this sort of a um, structure is you have this fill amount. So if someone is at 50% health, you would just drop this from 1 to 0.5. Now what the shape we're using is actually going to be radial, the fill method radial 360, which is a full 360 um, fill method. And then we're going to set it to top so it starts at the top like a clock would, and we'll keep it at clockwise. And so what this does now is that as we reduce the fill amount, you'll see that it becomes that wedge that we're looking for. You can already kind of see how this is going to take shape. I'll actually increase the size of our image here so it's a little bit easier to see. And now you can see that, yeah, as if it's, you know, if something takes up half the half of the amount of the values that you're given you know, it'll take up half the graph. If it's three quarters, if it's one quarter, it, you know, will adjust. This fill amount is gonna allow us to dynamically adjust the size. The other thing we're gonna need to do, however, though, is, um, well, two things. First thing we're gonna need to do is change the color because if we had these all be white wedges, you wouldn't be able to tell where one starts and one begins. So say one might be a red color, make that a little bit deeper red. Um, and now your next one, you know, might be blue, might be yellow. So we're going to need, when we do our coding, some way to say this one should be a different color from the previous one from the previous one. Now, for the sake of showing this, let's make this a little bit smaller. Now, a pie graph obviously involves more than one wedge. So the other thing we're going to do is somehow be able to create multiple wedges at once. And, they, um, and then be able to size them as we need to. So what we can do is say we have the second wedge here, we'll make it a blue color. We'll make it a green color so it stands out on that background. And now maybe it's a different size too, maybe it's, you know, 0.38 instead of the other one which was like 0.26. But the problem is they're all starting right at this top value, um, or at this top position, no matter what their values are. So the other thing we're going to need to make sure is that if this We'll disable this wedge for a second so that we can see this first wedge here ends right here. So we want to make sure that this second wedge is starting there. So we need to somehow do that. And how we're going to do that is with rotation. Um, X rotation and Y rotation we don't need to worry about because those would actually be on different angles to what we're looking for. The Z rotation is the, um, is the imagine, imagine a point coming from the screen straight to your nose or then going away from you. That's the Z axis. So it's going to rotate like the like the hands of a clock would. So if we start turning this at a negative value, we see that it actually starts rotating around the uh, around the graph. It's interesting to note that it is a negative value um, for clockwise motion. So you'll have to make sure that when we're doing this in the code, we are going to be subtracting our rotation value and not adding it. And so basically, it would sort of add up to something like that. We can actually make this cleaner if we say for our first one that we're doing just an even 0 
then we'll know oops, clockwise keep that there then we know this next one should be starting right at negative 90 um, and then if this one was say 0 0.5 we could create another wedge here change the color of that to say a purple and maybe it's only filling up 0.1 but now we know that we have a quarter plus a half so three quarters of the way around so we want it to be negative 270 and so basically as you can see this is how this is all going to fill up um, if we want to finish out this graph you could maybe have one more and maybe it's a so that's going to be a 0.15 and then we just have this one fill up to, to right where it fills in perfectly 54 I guess that is like I said we're not gonna have this is gonna all be done dynamically for us so we're not gonna have to worry about what these numbers are it's gonna be based on the fill amount and the total number that's been filled so far but that's really the um, all of the logic behind what we're gonna do we're gonna be creating a creating a wedge making sure it's parented to the pie graph setting its color its size is going to be based on the data that we put in and then where it's positioned is going to be based on how much of the pie is already taken up until we've reached the 100% point. So that's basically it for this video. Like I say, we're just going through the fundamentals here today. Um, in the next part of this, I'll actually show you how to create this. We're actually only going to be adding one script to our pie graph and it's going to handle all of this for us. Um, so until next time, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in part two.